<laughs> G'day, Stu here from UAV Futures, and today, well, something that a lot of you Northern Hemisphere FPV brothers are going to love, and that's uh, we're going to be looking at some micros, and specifically, we're going to be looking at the Fury B micro and also the Fury B goggles. Now, this is a relatively, really cheap sort of setup, I think, uh, and the one that makes this interesting is that it actually runs on 2S, so we're going to be doing some 2S action micro stuff. Because traditionally in the past, a lot of the micros, and I'll leave some links up to some of the other ones up here, uh, like the LT105 and things like that, that's all been on 1S. So I'm pretty excited to be trying a 2S. And uh, when this thing came across my bench, look, traditionally, I try to stay away from things that look very gimmicky and very toy-like. But uh, besides the little canopy that's on this, the rest of this stuff is some fairly decent kit. You know, it's got like an F3 flight controller or a proper FP FPV VTX. All those sorts of things, so that's pretty exciting. So this is basically a micro video with some cheap gear, so if you're just looking to get into the hobby or you want a really cheap solution for flying around indoors, uh, this stuff might be for you. Anyway, let's stick it on the bench, check out its features, and then most importantly, go for a little spin around the house. All right, let's get started. Alrighty, so here it is on the bench, and depending what sort of bundle you get, uh, there's a couple of different little options. So in some of them, you've just got the craft here, some are like bind and fly, some don't have receivers, there's a whole deal, I'll leave some links down below, and also check out Google as well because they might have some better prices somewhere and you've also got the goggles right here so sometimes that comes with some of the versions and things like that or you can buy these separately but what we've got here so we've got the actual unit itself and the little uh, Fury B wasp drone and we've also got the little headset as well we're gonna be having a look at the uh, actual drone itself first and then we'll jump over and we'll have a look at the goggles alrighty so here's the little drone and uh, yeah this thing does look like a toy which traditionally I don't really like but I guess there's not really too much difference between a tiny little plastic pod that you'd have on here anyway and a normal looking micro so I'm quite happy with it in this size if this was any bigger I would probably say like if this was uh, this sort of silly wasp looking canopy thing was on a real size craft I probably wouldn't really be a fan but I think in terms of this little micro it's all about having fun and uh, you know I don't think it's too bad anyway so if we take the top off here we actually can see some of the components that we've got underneath so uh, this is probably where the magic of you know the thing that attracted to me was straight off the bat uh, it runs on 2s so it's going to have a little bit more power within your tiny whoop or some of the LT, uh, LT105s and things like that. So it should have a little bit more gusto when it's flying around and hopefully some longer flight times. Uh, it's rocking. It's, so it's about, I think it's 90 millimeters from motor to motor or maybe 100 millimeters. Still really, really small anyway. You can see it's got ducted little prop guards here. So uh, it's not going to be bouncing into the walls or, or if it does bounce into the walls, it's not going to be damaging them or anything like that. Uh, and then this little bit of the magic, the F3 brushed flight controller, and that is actually running beta flight, which I really, really like, because uh, that's going to give us a very smooth, I guess, controlled response when we're flying around. Towards the front, you've got your uh, 25 milliwatt VTX channel right here mixed with your FPV camera. I think it's just a CMOS FPV camera, but that's pretty standard for these really tiny ones anyway. And it is running a little whip antenna. You can see that shooting out, out here across the back, so that's right there. Uh, it's got a little buzzer, which I think is very important, especially if you're flying these around. I like the color. That's going to make it harder to lose. But uh, especially when it's this small, if you lost this thing in the garden or something, a buzzer is definitely going to come in handy. And because you've got your battery in under Underneath. I've actually got the battery charging now. I'll just go get it one second. Here's the battery. So because you've got your battery underneath and it slides in, it goes from one end is smoother to slide it in than the other. I can't remember which way it goes, but it is a 400 milliamp hour battery. But because that's going to be tightly secured in here and attached around the side, you're not going to have too much worries about jettisoning the, bat jettisoning the battery, which means your buzzer should always be working. Now, uh, here's one part that might be a little bit different depending on where you get it from. You actually get this little receiver in here. Now, this one binds up to a, you know, like a DMS or a spectrum radio or something like that. I'm using an orange module in the back of my TBS Tango to get mine to fly but uh, I think you could just probably solder in a different receiver in there if you like, because to be honest, I'm not the biggest fan of these receivers, and I'm gonna show you why right now. Alrighty, so I've got my TBS Tango radio, I've got my orange module in the back, which you use to bind it up so I can talk the right language to this drone. I'm gonna plug it in, you notice it goes into bind mode right here, so we'll plug this in. You can notice that that receiver's flashing very, very quickly. Uh, to bind it, I'm gonna hold in the little button on the back and uh, turn my radio on, and we'll watch this orange light on here. You know, just, I'll try and point it with the antenna right there. There we go, the light's gone off, it started flashing and then it should go solid when it's got the right connection. There we go. So now this is bound. This would be ready to rock and roll, I think, so. Yeah, so <laughs> it is ready to rock and roll. But watch what happens when I turn my radio off. So I'm gonna turn my radio off, that's fine. You know, obviously we've lost the connection, it's buzzing. Yeah, fair enough, that's all good. 
Now, I'm going to plug it back in. It goes into bind mode again. So, and look, I'll turn my radio on just to prove. Turning my radio on. Uh, da -da 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 -da. You know, it's gone through its thing. That light is still buzzing, still flashing away right here in bind mode. So uh, every single time that you want to fly this thing, you're going to have to hold that bind button on the back, which look, to, to be honest, it's not the biggest hassle, but I do find it a little bit annoying. Now, look, I do know there'll be some very helpful people who will say, Stuart, type this in the CLI in beta flight, you know, the SAT, SAT bind equals zero or equals seven. All the, I've done all that stuff. And uh, no matter what sort of setting I put this in, I can't seem to stop it turning into bind mode whenever I turn it on. So that part's been a little bit frustrating, but you know, what, what can we really do, I guess? So let's uh, keep going on with the on with the review. Now it is spinning some tri-blade props on the outside just here, keeping with its yellow and black theme, I guess. This program would be really good for kids because it does look like, well, it sort of is a mix between hobby and toy grade. Uh, and then you've got your little brush motors on here as well. And the important thing to know about brush motors is they have a limited lifespan. And I do wonder, is running this thing on 2S, is that going to have any bad effects or negative effects on the on the overall uh, lifespan of the motors so that's something that's very hard to tell because uh, you know that could take weeks of flying this thing around or you know countless hours of this thing being airborne anyway so that's the sort of quad itself you just simply screw this part onto the top I really don't mind that uh, screw this on here and then uh, you'd be ready to rock and roll and go for a flight Alrighty, now looking at the goggles, the Fury B VR01s, uh, they didn't actually come with this TBN anten TBS antenna, I'll put that to the side. They do come with, uh, I think it's one of these rubber duckies, or something like that, so you can put that on there. I'm just using the TBS antenna so I can get a bit better reception. But uh, they've got a little patch antenna. It's kind of interesting how they actually have diversity. I wasn't expecting diversity from such a budget sort of, they do feel cheaply made as well, budget set of goggles. Doesn't, doesn't even give you a battery or mine didn't come with a battery. You actually need a little plug that I had to plug in here. I'll see if I can find that. So here's the little plug that it comes with and you simply plug this in and then uh, you're ready. I think it's in the, this one right here, the voltage in, ready to rock and roll. This can take a, I think like a two to three S LiPo as you're flying around. It can scan for your channel. Uh, I think it's, it doesn't do any DVR or anything like that. And it's got a tiny little screen on here. Again, these are some pretty budget goggles and just looking at them, this foam's not nearly enough. You know, I would need to heavily modify this if I was gonna use it on a regular basis. There is a lot of light leakage and I will talk about these as well, I guess when I'm flying around but the the one part I did like was how it actually has diversity because even something like the fat shark attitudes or uh, you know their original receivers they only have one receiver so it's really good that you can uh, be putting two antennas on here but overall I guess just a, a fairly standard nothing very exciting about these goggles I'm much more impressed with the actual drone itself the 2s drone to fly around than I am with these goggles what I want to do now because uh what this is all about you know it's one thing to sort of put them on the bench let's take it in the air fly around and uh I'll show you some DVR from the actual craft and we'll talk about how that flies around and then I'm going to also record myself where I've got these goggles on as well because I'll be able to give a bit of an impression on how these FPV, goggle go the FPV goggles go. That's a hard sentence to say. Anyway, enough rambling. Let's uh, cut to some DVR and check out this drone in action in three, two, one. Alrighty, so here we are flying around and the first thing I want to point out is just how weird it actually feels to fly a 2S Micro. So uh, just with that 2S power, it felt so much more responsive, I guess, than my LT-105 and especially like a Tiny Whoop or something like that. This, this thing just felt like it had plenty of power. So it was a little bit touchy on the controls and I definitely think I need to put the Expo up a little bit so you can see me rocking back and forth there. That's definitely pilot error because this thing just wanted to go. So uh, in such a tiny house, it really did want to pick up speed very, very quickly. Now there's something that I really want to uh, highlight just here in this DVR. I think I go up in a moment, up over the top of those pots and pans and usually I get a ton of prop wash or, or you'll know when you're dropping in something, if you're flying a tiny whoop and you drop out of the sky, just to, or you like you're coming into your own prop wash, just how much power it takes to stop yourself. But watch the prop wash on this thing. So it's straight up, over, down, and then it's ready to keep going. So there was no drop at all, which was something that I really put down to that 2S power. Uh, you don't drop out of the sky, sky as much or lose nearly as much altitude as you think you would when you're normally flying around on a brush micro. So I felt really, really good on the controls and uh, especially for acro. Like I think uh, if you put this thing into some acro mode, I didn't do it because I was inside, but I did try some little yaw spins. This thing felt fantastic in the air. So you could definitely do some cool little tricks and flips and rolls and things like that. So it's very, very agile very nimble and you can definitely feel that 2s power it just takes a little bit to get used to so uh, there we go so there drop 
popping in. I think I try a yaw spin very, very soon, and then I try another one, and I sort of have a crash into the pots and pans. But overall, a really, really fun and surprisingly, there's the yaw spin, surprisingly powerful uh, little 2S brushed micro quad. There's another one, crash into the pots and plant pans. And so Alrighty, so I've plugged this in. I've made this little mod on my cable, and now let's check out these uh, Fury B goggles. And putting these on, Look, they're, they're not very comfortable, but in saying that they are very light, so they feel very cheap, but because they're so light, they don't feel like they're pressing too much on your face. I would definitely be modding them with a bit of foam, and there's a bit of light leakage here under the nose, but surprisingly, there's no other light leakage except for down here, I feel like I'm picking my nose, except for down here near my nose. Uh, and I did notice when I was mucking around with the scanning buttons, they have an auto scan and a little receiver strength for how much channel you're actually, how much uh, reception you're actually getting. And then you can also manually change the band and things like that, which is very, very useful. Anyway, uh, enough rambling about them. Let's actually fly with them and see how they go. All right, you know what? These are surprisingly decent. Like I thought they would be, uh, it's very hard to fly and talk at the same time. I thought they would be a little bit you know, they sort of feel like the Kylans. I think even they seem very clear and focused as well. I won't actually be flying around in in this room because you won't be able to hear me, but they seem very clear. The colors are nice. Uh, so far, no issues. I don't feel any latency or anything like that. Definitely flyable. It is, and I, I really like the distance that it's away from my face too. It's not too disorientating. Yeah, in terms of the actual video picture, I really like these goggles. I just wish they were a bit more comfortable. I think they're the perfect size in terms of your screen as well. It's not too big where you can't see everything, but it's also not too small. I'm actually pretty impressed. I'll have to check out how, how much these are again because I can't remember off the top of my head. But uh, I thought these were going to be a lot worse than they were. My initial first impressions, I guess, because of the cheap plastic on the outside, I thought they wouldn't be very good. But yeah, they seem to be quite okay. And I do like the diversity. So far the reception does seem very good. Even though I'm just flying around my house it, and it is hard to tell sort of to stress the systems. But so far I think for an indoor flyer, yeah, you, you, oh, I just crashed into the laptop. But for an indoor flyer, yeah, I think you'd have a blast with these. Alrighty, I'm just gonna do one more flight, but this time with the uh, the DVR of the Fat Sharks because I used the Fat Sharks for my DVR last time and then I flew around with the goggles and look, it was very strange because for some reason it felt easier indoors anyway, at least in this micro environment. Uh, to be flying around with those. Maybe I'm just getting used to the quad, so uh, maybe that's what it is. So I'm going to stick these back on and see if I can notice a difference. Just a sort of a nice comparison between these expensive ones and those sort of budget goggles. Radio, so flying around. I wonder if it was just, uh, I reckon I know what it was. I reckon it was because that other battery was becoming a bit lower. It was a little bit more tame because this thing does have a bit more power than I was used to. So uh, I guess it used to for a micro anyway. Yeah, I think that's what it was. The goggles didn't make it easier. It was more that the battery was getting a bit lower. So I was finding it a bit more uh, docile in the turn. It was a little bit easier to control around the house. So there it is. There's my review of the Fury B or the, I keep calling it the Furby drone, but the Fury B wasp drone, uh, whatever it is. There's some links down below, but hopefully you guys enjoyed that. And uh, yeah, I'm going to say with this one, I was pleasantly surprised like the features looked good but I wasn't sure how the execution was going to be and would it all come together and especially because it looks like a toy you know it's got this sort of wasp B part on the top but I gotta say I had a lot more fun flying this thing around than I thought I was going to I thought I was going to have some issues or it wouldn't fly too well and uh, for a 2S micro it seemed to have plenty of punch uh, I could do a, probably a little bit of acro with this stuff if you were good enough and could definitely pick up a little bit of speed so that was a really nice surprise uh, yeah, and the same goes for the goggles as well. Like I thought these things were definitely going to be some a, a cheap piece of plastic right here that was going to be useless and totally not worth the money. But again, I was very surprised with those. So uh, I actually found it, you know, like the battery was getting a little bit docile here, but I actually found my second flight when I was flying around with this, I seemed to be flying better with these on. And that was because of the battery, but it just goes to show I was still having a great time with these sort of budget, uh, the Fury B VR01 goggles anyway. So that's fantastic, I think. So if you're definitely uh, stuck indoors this winter and it's really cold where you are, or you just want a really cool indoor little drone, definitely check out the Fury B because uh, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised just like I was. It would be really cool if you could put a different receiver in there and there might be some different receiver options, so I'm not 100% sure about that. But yeah, overall, uh, a ton of fun. So definitely shop around. If you can get one for a cheap price, snap it up. Anyway, subscribe for more FP... Ugh.
I just ate a bug. Anyway, subscribe for more FPV related content. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that video. Uh, if you did, definitely hit that like button because uh, I'd really appreciate that and that goes a long way. It's one of the best ways that you can help this channel. But subscribe for more FPV related content and as always, happy flying. <laughs> Alrighty, so hopefully you guys enjoyed that video. Definitely subscribe if you're new to the channel and check out these videos. And I'm also going to leave a little link here to my Patreon page because I've got some fantastic Patreon supporters and I like to give back to them as well. So if you want to join the UAV Futures family, there's things like bonus Velcro straps, little bundles of FPV goodies and things like that that also get sent out. Anyway, happy flying.